So what is Textiles? Uh, textiles attaches blockchain-based NFT data chips onto fashion products, monetarily incentivizing brands and resellers for the secondhand apparel market with smart contract enabled trail commissions. These are the little, uh, they're called NFC buttons. They're near function communication chips and you can just hold up your phone to it uh, and you take ownership of that NFT. But then when you go to resell it, the people before you effectively get royalties from the ownership as well, which I thought was really cool. Clothing manufacturers are all about the bottom line as all companies are. And if they have the opportunity to get these profit margin hits on future sales, they're going to see the value in that. And they have the capability to start changing the way that they manufacture those clothing pieces um, because they want to chase that profit margin into the future. Hey everyone, Thomas here from Block on Air, where we interview interesting people from the industry. And today I'm joined by Lacey Thorne, an MBA candidate at the Yale School of Management and founder of Textiles. Hey Lacey, how are you today? Hi, I'm doing well, thank you. Perfect. Lacey will introduce us to her new founded startup, Textiles, and I would basically hand it over at this point to you, Lacey. So Absolutely. let's go. Um, so Textiles is a, a fashion tech startup that resides on the blockchain. And I will share my screen a little bit with you to have a little bit of a visual reference. So what is Textiles? Uh, Textiles attaches blockchain-based NFT data chips onto fashion products, monetarily incentivizing brands and resellers for the secondhand apparel market with smart contract enabled trail commissions. And there might be a few uh, keywords in there that really capture the attention of your audience, Thomas. Absolutely. Um, so our audience is mostly uh, tech based and I, uh, I'm 100% sure that everybody from my audience has heard of NFTs. Yeah. So the question is, how do they connect with the uh, apparel uh, secondhand market? Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about the concept. Um, so to give you a little bit of insight, um, the resale market for the apparel industry is really exploding right now. It's right now it's projected to double in the next five years, reaching $77 billion. Um, and our competitors like Poshmark, ThreadUp, The Real Real, Depop um, are distributing being just really incredible growth. I mean, Depop was purchased by Etsy in June of this year for $1.625 billion in cash. Uh, the real world experience like 91% year over year growth. I mean, these platforms are just growing and growing. So what is the pain point from a customer perspective? Uh, all of these platforms take a 20% commission, right? And that 20% commission leaves out the original brand uh, and it leaves out original resellers as well. So they don't really get uh, in incentivized uh, on these resale platforms. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know the problem from uh, eBay uh, that probably the rest of the world knows too. Uh, the commissions mm -hmm. are sky high and there's so, no incentive at all for... Right. Uh, yeah. So the way that Textiles uh, plans on correcting this issue, and this is where the NFT developers and the smart contract experts come in, um, we effectively attach uh, a NFC chip, and I'll show you a picture of it here in a minute, but we attach an NFC chip, and you can hold your iPhone up to it, um, and that NFC chip pulls up an app on your phone uh, that shows that it is connected to an NFT. So once that garment is resold on the textiles platform, that NFT auto, uh, transaction auto triggers trail commissions going back through the lineage of the ownership, kind of pooling at the bottom of whoever uh, originally attached the chip. And that might be the brand or it might be the reseller. But then once you kind of get in line, Anytime that garment is then sold in the future, 
uh, you receive residual profits. That is, um, I mean, that's, uh, I think a problem that is pretty much solved by the NFT uh, marketplaces at the moment with the secondary sales mm -hmm. revenues that they are trying mm -hmm. to do. And you're hooking up um, uh, the garment industry into that. Is that correct? And one of the big challenges that, that you probably correct. have is the physical component of that side as well. I yeah, assume. absolutely. And I'll show you um, some of these uh, data chips here in a little while. Um, but the financial aspect is only one component. Um, we can also upload uh, lifestyle data to the blockchain. You know, if you want to try to increase the value of your apparel item, you can have an influencer or a celebrity wear it and take a picture of it and um, or just upload pictures and videos and maps of where you've worn it and what you've done in it uh, and really try to increase that value. And then also from a, a brand perspective, they can uh, see a little bit of consumer demographic data as well. And I have reference for uh, this particular platform that I can talk to your developers about too. So it's not too it's not too challenging. It's all been done before. We're just kind of introducing the trail commissions into the picture. Interesting. Yeah. So this is kind of a visual representation of um, the life cycle of a garment. You know, it kind of starts up here at the brand where they attach the chip and it goes down here to the consumer and they purchase the item and unlock that NFT ownership. And when they go to resell it, they don't go to one of these platforms, they go to our platform. Uh, and when that transaction is auto triggered, those profits generate back to the consumer and the brand. And then later on, you know, as that product life cycle continues, um, those trail commissions continue going through uh, the life cycle of the, the lineage of ownership, which is pretty cool, very different from Poshmark's um, commission strategy. Yeah, and I, I assume the incentive uh, to go back to, uh, to use your platform as a uh, just like as the go-to platform to resell the item uh, would be that you're also in line then for commission. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, That's correct. Sorry. And so um, the commissions vary and modify every single time it gets sold and resold. Um, with diminishing returns, but there is uh, an incentive from a percentage standpoint from for the, per the first person uh, that gets it onto that apparel item. So we really think that clothing brands are going to be into this and um, it will also incentivize uh, resellers as well. So sounds, my sounds question, very good. yeah, so the, the way that this idea originated and I think part of the question that I have for your tech community, um, I was reading a Rolling Stone article, you know, I love rock and roll. And uh, I realized that uh, music bands are releasing music albums as NFTs on the blockchain. And uh, when those NFTs get sold later down the road, the smart contracts um, effectively provide royalties back to the band. And so my thought process was, what if we did that with clothing? You know, you buy something and you scan it in. These are the little, uh, they're called NFC buttons. They're near function communication chips and you can just hold up your phone to it. Uh, and you take ownership of that NFT, but then when you go to resell it, the people before you effectively get royalties from the ownership as well, which I thought was really cool. So. If music bands are able to do it, I feel like there's a smart contract capability uh, from a programming perspective where we can take that inspiration and apply it to this concept as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. And um, do you feel like one of the biggest uh, challenges would be to have people scan the smart tags or one of the biggest challenges is blockchain integration itself? What do you think is like the, a, a, the challenge here for- Potentially. Sorry. For market adoption. I think as I think as consumers become more comfortable with NFTs, obviously this is still an emerging technology. Um, it will become a little bit more second nature. However, because they are financially incentivized to kind of 
get their ownership lineage onto that uh, trail commission. Um, I think that the idea of receiving future profits from future sales is enough to get them to kind of go outside of what they would normally do and, and not incorporate that scanning aspect to it. Um, just from a curiosity standpoint to say, all right, what is it like to actually put something on the blockchain in 1975 and potentially still be receiving trail commissions from it in 2021? Yeah, you know. a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people forget that that if uh, once it's on the blockchain, it basically it can live forever uh, as long as the blockchain mm -hmm. is 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 online. It doesn't have to be just because the company is there. Um, it, it is usually detached from an actual business that is somewhere yeah. registered. It can just live on. And so, some of my classmates have um, kind of figured out the financial model and the the commissions and you know smarter financial minds than my own have kind of looked into it. Um, my background, the way that I came to this, um, I was actually looking at it from a sustainability perspective. Um, you know, if, if clothing companies are incentivized financially to receive profit margins on future sales, they're going to create garments that last and have more than one cycle of a user. Um, and so fast fashion, hopefully will stop producing so much output which is pretty cool. Um, so there's three main components to the, um, the NFT uh, data. So number one is the smart contract enabled trail commissions uh, where they receive the future profit margin on multiple resale transactions. Uh, number two is the storytelling data memories where people are able to kind of upload pictures of themselves. And we all know social media can be so powerful in a variety of different ways of people taking pictures and videos and really trying to improve the value of that particular garment. And the last one, number three, is um, opt-in consumer market intelligence. So when people claim their NFT, uh, we're able to see who that person is and what they're doing and what their email address is. And obviously it's uh, optional for the consumer to do that. It's not like the chip is tracking you or anything like that. But as a result, brands are really able to get a tremendous amount of data from who's actually buying their clothing and what they're doing with it. Yeah, I think, I mean, one of the biggest uh, things for me would be have a community around that and the storytelling mm -hmm. data memories. That would be very interesting um, if, mm -hmm. if it would be possible for uh, brands eventually to build communities around their fashion and around their apparel um, mm -hmm. and have lasting apparel. Uh, that would be a huge step in uh, towards sustainability. For sure. Correct me if I'm wrong there. No, that's absolutely the intention. Uh, and the crazy part is that it's actually a, an extremely profitable venture for textiles. So we did some uh, retail math on uh, Poshmark's existing uh, consumer base and figured out that they generally maybe do around 60 million transactions every year. Um, so if we were able to just c capture 12% of that market, based on our fixed cost, our uh, net revenue for year one to year five would be around $52 million. So it's it's a highly profitable venture as well as being good for the environment, which is nice. I like it when those two things coincide with each other. Um, but I came to this uh, idea actually from my own experience in the fashion industry. I've been working in New York and Hong Kong for about the last 15 years in fast fashion. So I was the first person hired for the Jennifer Lopez brand for Kohl's. Uh, so I would fly out to Los Angeles and meet with Jennifer and her team and go through her closet and kind of get an idea of what the, the clothing line should look like. And then I would take that information back to the New York design studio, but then I would actually go and visit our Asia factories. And I think I remember going into a factory and witnessing a, a unit order of 60,000 pieces of neon pink jeans being made. And I saw so many pairs of pants, the concept of pants stopped making sense in my mind. You know, it's just like when you repeat a word too many times. And I realized, you know, if this is one 
order for one brand for one store in the entire global supply chain for the apparel industry. Like this is absolutely wild because those jeans were going to fall apart after a couple of washes. And I kind of started to realize the magnitude at which the global fashion industry really operates. Um, and it's then scary, when I live right? in, well, I think, you know, we think of fashion in these very kind of small perspectives of our own closets. But if you walk into a room of a hundred people, the one thing you're all going to have in common, hopefully, is that you're wearing clothes and more likely than not, you're wearing mass produced clothes. Like nobody's going at home and weaving their own loom, you know? And so when you multiply that throughout to the, the global population, not only does the scale become really large, but the opportunity becomes really large too. And I think that we see the resale platforms now, Poshmark, Real Real, eBay, uh, Depop, the, they're exploding in consumer value because everyone can participate in them and therefore everybody can participate in ours because it's better because you actually receive money rather than paying a commission. Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. And I find it's, I find it's kind of interesting how the quality, uh, got worse over time from, from the clothings, which yeah, I don't know really if it's intentional or not. I don't want to imply anything. Um, but it's been, it's been, it's been scary how, you know, a couple of times washing and you can throw away t-shirts. They just have holes in them. And it's just like, right. Know. But, you know, clothing manufacturers are all about the bottom line as all companies are. And if they have the opportunity to get these profit margin hits on future sales, they're going to see the value in that. And they have the capability to start changing the way that they manufacture those clothing pieces um, because they want to chase that profit margin into the future, which is kind of cool. I hope so. I hope so. Um, so absolutely kudos to, to not only to your idea, but also you need probably a lot of energy and um, I hope you have a good team on your hand. <laughs> I am very lucky to uh, currently be a, an MBA candidate at Yale School of Management, um, actually focusing on sustainability. So I have an amazing team of very close advisors who tell me everything from, you know, blockchain discussions, cryptocurrency, venture capital, overseeing um, startup business ventures. Um, we even have on staff, uh, Vincent Stanley is a, an executive resident in residence at Yale, and he's the chief philosophy officer at Patagonia. So I was able to uh, do a Zoom meeting with him, and Patagonia is a very um, sustainably minded brand, and we were able to kind of chat about the concept of what it would be if clothing brands saw future profit incentives in secondhand markets, and he was very supportive of the concept that is great that is that is yeah. perfect and um i i see a little bit further down in your in your slides um that it's not only for uh used clothing and, and it's also for new clothing which uh makes sense um, yeah so the sorry, people who are able to um attach these nfc chips and upload a particular garment onto the blockchain, it can happen at the manufacturing source, which would be great. You know, that means the manufacturer or the clothing brand can go ahead and upload marketing content to the blockchain so that when you buy it new in the store, you can scan it and see all kinds of cool things about uh, that garment from the, from the brand's perspective. Um, but we can also capture uh, the supply of apparel anywhere within its life cycle. So it's possible for uh, you to put a chip onto your garment that you have in your closet and then go and upload it. And uh, that means that you are the original provenance of that NFT. And so the, the profit commissions kind of pull back to you as a reseller. The race to the first. Yeah, um, absolutely. 
and I, I think it's fascinating those NFT, uh, NFC chips they are increasingly cheap and mm -hmm. widely available and most Amen. phones have NF, NFC readers I mean that's mm -hmm. like basically every phone has an NFC reader nowadays um, we try to do something similar uh, with olive oil for projects at the Z um, mm -hmm. if you don't know what it is you find the link in the description below uh, where we tried to send out olive oil. We had QR codes on that oil to unlock NFTs. And um, because basically it's very hard to integrate NFC chips into a bottle of olive oil. Uh, plus mm -hmm. it was a very, very small scale project. And um, I, I personally think the, the idea to put NFC chips in there makes total sense. And it's very, very easy for apparel producers um, to actually add that to the apparel. And it's, I th I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I heard that uh, apparel producers already put sometimes NFC, NFC chips in there to, um, uh, as, as proof of... Um, supply chain. A cer a yeah, a supply chain and, and... And authenticity. Yeah, proof of authenticity, yes. Is that Yeah, I, I really anticipate uh, this kind of technology. So right now this technology is being utilized by some of my um, blockchain competitors in the space of uh, supply chain transparency. So they're making sure that the organic cotton that you bought from America is the exact same organic cotton that you end up with your factory in China. Or uh, at the diamond mine, they will inscribe a, a serial number into the diamond, and then that gets uploaded to an NFT to make sure that this diamond originated from this place. Um, so we're taking some of that same um, ledger technology and just applying it to the uh, resale apparel market, which is really interesting. You know. With an exploding industry of any kind, there's a lot of research that goes along with it. Um, so actually, uh, one of our competitors, ThreadUp, put out a very detailed data report. And it actually, if we're wondering if brands would be incentivized or open to you know, this kind of resale profit margin, they asked. And it said that 58% of retail executives say that they would be more likely to test out resale if there were a financial incentive to do so. And as retailers are planning to get into resale, um, I don't know if you guys can see this, it's kind of small, hold on. So 60% say they are partnering, concerning partnering with an existing resale business. Um, and 28% are thinking about building it on their own from scratch. And textiles kind of does both. So we provide the infrastructure, but ultimately they are the ones that are able to receive the profit margin. Um, and if they are connecting the NFCs at the manufacturing source, uh, our name as textiles never needs to enter the consumer's mind. It can look as if the, it's a platform owned by the brand. So you're offering a totally white labeled solution for mm -hmm. the, re okay. So yeah, so that's generally the, the proposal. And I'm really um, excited to be connected to your audience because my next step in this process, I am getting connected with a few startup entrepreneurial accelerator programs to get some seed funding and let's get this product developed. That's perfect. So you are looking into developers, I assume, that are helping Correct. out uh, on your brand um, and they best would get in touch with you. I assume at some point. Uh, and... Yeah, absolutely. If you want to include my contact information in the description, or if you want me to just say it right now, either way, I can. I would be love to receive some contact information from people. Absolutely. So if you're looking to get hired uh, and work for an up and coming, really cool startup that does both something in the blockchain world as well as do something for our planet, uh, then check out the description below or directly get in contact with Lacey and she will tell you now how to do that. Yeah, it's my name. You can see it right here. Yes. Uh, it's Lacey.thorn, L-A-C-I-E dot T-H-O-R-N-E at Yale.edu. And I'm specifically looking for people who have developed their own NFTs before. Um, 
preferably on, I think it's called a second tier platform because we're trying to avoid some gas fees. And um, if you have experience in uh, developing smart co contracts, that's even more of a benefit. All right. Yeah. Layer two solutions and smart contracts. Does it, does it have to be Ethereum? Does it have to be Solidity or uh, are you looking into Hyperledger? I'm really it... open right now. Um, Solana sounds really interesting. You know, I have a friend out in Portugal this week attending their conference and getting some information. So I think at this point we're really open to it. And the good news is that uh, a an NFT platform very similar to ours exists that we can kind of look at from a, a reference perspective. And then we're just kind of tweaking it uh, to modify the smart contracts and a few things. So I feel like it's going to be achievable. Yeah, maybe it's going to be flow. I had a call last week uh, with uh, the founders of Seeds. The uh, video is going to be uploaded actually uh, this weekend to our YouTube channel. So if you see this video, then go check it out. It's on our mm -hmm. YouTube channel. Uh, and they are using Flow, which was specifically created for NFTs. It was actually created from the founder or the writer of the ERC721 uh, smart contract and currently working for Dapper Labs in, in Germany. Um, so maybe there's some, you know, some col collaboration in the future at some point. Um, Very possible. Not... Did, you say, did you say it's the, it's the cryptocurrency Seeds, S-E-E-D-S? Um, it is a it is an NFT based um, a blockchain game called Z Seeds with Z or Z Z like the last yeah. the last character in the alphabet. Um, Very cool. E E D Z dot I O. Um, so it's a small. Uh, the idea of them was to uh, utilize a blockchain game and use the uh, royalties or the proceeds or whatever it's gonna be. Um, to directly fund NGOs that are helping with uh, to combat any kind of uh, CO2 carbon, help, help reduce the carbon footprint of uh, humanity on Earth, basically. Yeah, it was an, it's a very interesting project and they are working very hard on it and they are building it on their own blockchain, uh, which is uh, the Flow blockchain. Uh, yeah, cool. But it, it makes sense for them. So it's not it's not just a hyped, hyped thing. I was very impressed by their solution. And also link in the description below uh, mm -hmm. if you're interested as well. And you can also include a link to the textiles websites. It's uh, T-E-C-H-S-T-Y-L-E-S dot I-O. Find out a little bit more about it. Absolutely. So um, you find this one as well as the contact information to get in touch with uh, Lacey directly in the description below. And yeah, is there anything else that um, you want to talk about today? Well, I just want to say I, I'm such a crypto enthusiast. I spent the pandemic not only applying to Yale, but also taking a course in cryptocurrency and have been trading and really enjoying just the conceptual thought that comes uh, with the crypto world. Uh, so when I learned about the NFTs, and started kind of connecting that to my professional background. I'm just, I'm really excited about the space. I think that there's an incredible opportunity from an industry-wide perspective to really start disrupting some major global industries, which is what I enjoy doing. That's fantastic. Well, I hope your crypto portfolio will explode uh, <laughs> as well as mine and everyone else is on the call. And um, I wish you very, very good luck with your uh, project. And I hope we maybe see each other again on a future call. Um, yeah. And in the meantime, everyone, if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe, find the you know infos in the description below, and I will see you in one of the next videos.